Coming up today, the beautiful Emiliano Hotel in Rio de Janeiro. This hotel redefined for me what an urban resort is capable of being. It's almost flawless. The full tour starts in 15 seconds. A very good morning and welcome to the channel if you're new here. My name's Kevin and today I'm going to take you on a tour of this gem of a property hidden in plain sight on the famous Copacabana Beach. If you'd like to know more about the rate that I paid, what I think my room was actually worth, and the next five videos I have in queue, check out the pinned comment below. The Emiliano Rio opened in 2018 to much fanfare, due both to its bold design, but also to what it was contributing to the Copacabana hotel scene. Here's the thing about Rio. Whether in Ipanema, Leblon, Leme, or Copacabana, there are not more than a handful of modern, upscale hotels available to choose from. Many of the big players in the market serve up really dated interiors, and after success with their initial property in Sao Paulo, the Emiliano Rio was conceived. Clad in what could be called a breathing facade, covered in shutters that can be open and closed from each of the guest room balconies, this changes the exterior design of the hotel throughout the day and doesn't sacrifice the amount of beautiful natural light that spills into the rooms, especially in the mornings. Let's take a quick look around the area. When thinking about Rio, most would just be thinking about the southern beaches. But fact of the matter is, it's a massive city, with the two primary airports well to the north. On a closer level, the main tourist areas are spread across these two beach areas comprised of four neighborhoods. Emiliano Rio is near the end of Copacabana, which gives it a unique due eastern exposure. Something that you can see is in very limited supply along these beaches. That exposure is why those exterior shutters come in so handy. Within a five minute walk, there are multiple banks, full-size supermarkets, and of course an acai or juice bar on practically every corner. Spread over 12 floors, the Emiliano has 90 rooms and was designed by Arthur Casas and Chad Oppenheim, who were challenged with the task of creating a design worthy of the hotel's excellent location. Their design ultimately came in the form of a scheme that blends Brazilian modernism with understated elegance, and a sensibility of design that made these properties easy for guests and locals alike to use the facilities with ease. Walking straight to the back, we're brought to the reception area and elevator lobby. Just past there, kind of through a hidden passage, we're brought to a guests-only lounge. The space is indoor-outdoor and marries the lush, organic living walls of the outdoor courtyard with the geometric backlit wood walls, with the furniture seamlessly blending the two. Emiliano seems to do with design, quite effortlessly and naturally, what many larger chains are trying to do with their newer, younger lifestyle brands, such as Canopy by Hilton, Voco by IHG, etc. Nothing against those brands, but when you're here, you can just feel that this is the real deal. Moving to the forward lounge and bar that is open to the public and framed by the same design on the facade. Most of the indoor areas throughout the ground floor have quite low ceilings, but everything else is designed on the same scale, and the general low-slung minimalist furnishings typical of Brazilian design make everything fit together pretty nicely, with a fresh but cozy feel.
Sharing the space with the lounge is the Bar Emil, part of the restaurant Emil, which serves up an Italian lunch, brunch, and dinner menu, with multiple fixed course options as well as a comprehensive breakfast menu, which we'll take a look at in a bit. The space is again lush with living walls and reminiscent of a Mediterranean street scene with pops of Brazilian flair. Without further ado, Let's go up to what I think is the hotel's best asset, by a long shot. The rooftop pool and terrace. For me, it's literally picture perfect. The sunscreen on offer is just one of the many touches that you'll find throughout the property, which will inspire a mini, ah, that's a nice touch moment. As we look around the terrace, rooftop restaurant, and vistas, that brings me to speaking a little bit about the service here. When you arrive, you'll be introduced to one of many butlers that will take care of your stay. I honestly have a love-hate relationship with quote-unquote butlers being offered at hotels that aren't white glove, because I think the hotels usually take the concept a bit too far. Once in a while though, we find the perfect balance, as Emiliano has. Your butlers will be as present or as invisible as you'd like them to be. Their service style is more casual than formal, but still polished and just about anything that you need, from arrival until departure, will be handled by them. Bring your bags up to the room, pick up and drop off your laundry, accompany a repair person to your room, deliver a bucket of ice. All of these seem like pretty mundane things, and they are, but at most hotels, each one of these would be brought to you by a new face at your door. At Emiliano, you get to see the same smiling and familiar face. It's a very small difference, but as someone who generally prefers hands-off service, it was a service style that's, let's say, effortlessly sophisticated, and it was one of the reasons that I fell in love with the property. Alright, let's head down to take a look at my room for this stay. I was staying in an Ocean Deluxe King, and after a room change that I'll explain shortly, I ended up on the 8th floor with a fantastic panoramic view of Copacabana and Leme. Personally, I love the design of the rooms. You can see how the shutters in front of the balcony act as a shield without making you feel as if you have blackout curtains drawn. The tones used are all light earth tones, whites, and a few splashes of green here and there. When your butler brings you to the room for the first time, you'll have some welcome treats waiting for you in a room that was gently scented with a familiar smell with some quiet bossa nova playing in the background on the integrated audio system, which you can also connect your own devices to. It's very much taking setting the scene to the next level. Colors are one part of the design, but the other is textures, from live plants to sisal wall coverings, woven carpets, wooden floors, luxurious linens, 
Altogether, it provides for one very comfortable package. The Brigadero chocolates were out of this world, and while it's becoming uh, more or less pretty normal to receive personalized welcome cards in high-end resorts or hotels, it's a rarity to receive multiple of them from different departments. When I first started this channel, I needed to decide which items I would take with me as souvenirs from different hotels. And I'll say that no matter how many times I receive them, there's something special about a handwritten note, and I keep every single one of them. As we take a look at some other areas, let me speak briefly about the hotel's one and only downfall that I noticed, cleanliness. And let me be very specific. In general, the hotel is spotless. My criticism is about two specific areas that you won't necessarily see. First off, I mentioned that I already had my room changed a few hours after arrival. The AC wasn't working properly. After calling, it was promptly dealt with. My butler and a repair person came up to hit some buttons and it magically worked again, but only for around 10 minutes. As I suspected, I looked up through the air vents and let's say a thorough cleaning was well overdue. When I called again, they let me know that they were already preparing another room, initiative that I really appreciated. I showed my butler the inside of the vent, and I think she was as surprised as I was. Quite possibly a simple oversight. The second issue was with the carpet in the room. It's actually a beautiful rug, and is woven from what I believe to be some sort of synthetic fiber. On my last day when I was repacking and organizing my things, I was barefoot, and after around 30 minutes of walking around the room, I sat down and was shocked to see the bottom of my feet were legit dark gray. Everything appeared clean, no visible dirt, but clearly this is the sort of thing that needs to be washed, not just vacuumed. And that's all the negative feedback that I've got. The mini bar was very well stocked with an assortment of reasonably priced snacks and refreshments, and the closets were expansive. Similar to Hotel Unique, which I reviewed a few weeks ago, Emiliano also provided flip-flops, this time Havaianas. But I already had three pairs with me on this trip, so I left this one behind. Up next, the bathroom and some of the best toiletries that I've ever found in a hotel. A quick story. Several years ago, I spent three months staying in Babylonia, a small favela just on the hills behind Leme, to the north of Copacabana. I fell in love with the city during that trip, and specifically, weirdly enough, the smells of the city. I'm a scent memory kind of person. To me, Rio smells like the sea, humid vegetation, and acai. That sweet scent that practically wafts its way through the streets of Rio. Well, the scent that I spoke about in the room earlier was a room spray by Santa Pele, the brand of the hotel spa, as well as all of the in-room amenities. The scent? Acai and water lily. Other product scents featured in the room were pineapple and ipe flower, and cacao and heliconia flower. All really fantastic stuff. Sorry as I ramble on about this, that you can also see the nice layout of the bathroom, complete with a Japanese-style toilet bidet, and a separate wet room with a shower and bathtub, with some pretty epic water pressure. And then we have the oversized balcony. Oversized as it's actually wider than the room is. Note that this is the view from my original room on the second floor. And here's my view from the 8th floor. Followed by a nice bottle of bubbles that was in my room to apologize for the room change.
For dinner, I wanted something a bit more casual than a meal, so I went to the rooftop restaurant, which along with the fantastic atmosphere, had great service and food. I started out with the bacalao fritters and ended with a delicious short rib burger with some pretty delicious bacon compote. Everything was good, but the fresh out of the bag french fries seemed like a bit of a lazy option to me. When I travel and my room has a view, I set my alarm for 30 minutes before sunrise to quickly check if it's going to be cloudy or clear. I was jolted awake by this breathtaking sky when I woke up that morning. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please support the channel by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing so you can see two new videos each week. Also, if you enjoy beautiful things like sunsets, seascapes, city walks, and the like, please check out my new channel, Rome, where full clips of this sunrise will be posted. Rome will be posting content four times each week. A genuine thank you in advance for doing any or all that I just spoke about. Breakfast the next morning was fantastic at the restaurant Emile on the ground floor. Fully a la carte and had many familiar and local dishes, including the typical Benedict, as well as of course acai, and something that I've never tried, seen, or even heard of before. Essentially a ricotta tapioca omelet, but there were no eggs involved. It looks like styrofoam, perhaps even had the texture of styrofoam, but had the aroma and taste of roasted rice cakes and was an unexpected and delicious twist. After that, the only thing left to show is the fitness center, which is integrated into the spa facility. The gym is small but functional and has some pretty spectacular views. Here's me pretending to walk on the treadmill so you can take in the view yourself. And of course, in addition to the products in the room, you can also buy full-size versions of them from the spa reception. That just about wraps up this tour for today, but before we get into the flip-flop score, I'll leave you with the same thing that I said to a friend while I was staying here. I've always seen Rio as a dynamic city that happens to be on a beach. Staying at the Emiliano has made me for the first time consider Rio as a true resort destination, and I suspect it'll do the same for some of you. On to the score. Nothing here is going to surprise you. Honestly, if it wasn't for the two cleanliness issues, this very well could have been my first ever perfect score. But at an overall score of 96 out of 100, there's not much to complain about. I really do hope that you enjoyed this review today and hope you'll click that thumbs up button and subscribe for two new videos each week.